In early America, home funerals were the practice everywhere, and each community had a group of women who came in to help with the laying out of the dead. Visitation was held in the front parlor followed by a procession to the church and cemetery. Until the mid-1800s most families cared for their own dead. They prepared, dressed and displayed their loved ones within the confines of their own home. Early American houses often did not have parlors, however as houses grew, and national mannerisms became more set, proper families made sure they had front rooms filled with their finest possessions, quality furniture, portraits, sterling silver, and often a piano. Because these rooms were usually clean, closed off, and quite formal, people often used them when someone died as a place to lay out the body and allow funeral visits. The body was usually displayed in a casket that was made or even purchased at the general store. Most grander homes of the 19th century had a false, or death door placed off of the formal room, that led to the outside without steps to remove a deceased family member. It was considered improper to remove a body through the door, the living cross to enter, also, it was considered bad form to carry them out feet first. Later a grave was dug, in the family cemetery. Since home parlors, have been largely replaced by funeral homes, the formal front room, or parlor has been turned into the modern family living room. Caring for your own dead began to change dramatically during the Civil War. Soldiers were dying on the battlefield, and their families would want them sent home for burial. This is when the practice of embalming, for shipping bodies over a long distance, first began to take place. Dr. Augustin Ward, 1839-1912, O.S. Physician, was one of the early leaders in the field, laying the groundwork for present-day embalming methods. During this time period, the family graveyard was moving towards the more park-like settings of the local cemetery. Also, the United States, established a number of national military cemeteries, where members of the armed forces were and continue to be buried. Soon after came the undertakers, who undertook this duty for the families at a time of need. It was not long before this became the normal way for families to take care of their dead. Over time, undertakers become known as morticians and funeral directors. In the beginning of the 1900s, the newly formed National Funeral Directors Association was pressing its members to consider themselves professionals, not tradesmen as the earlier coffin makers had been. Regular use of embalming was encouraged, and the new professionals used it to suggest they were keepers of the public health. 